let's solve this problem. So we have water, so H2O, and we're asked to determine properties at different states. And this problem has part A, then part B, then C. Instead of putting them all on one page, I'm just going to solve part A on one page and then go to part B on a different page, etc. So for part A, they give the temperature is 95 degrees C, the specific volume is 0.5 meter cubed per kilogram, and you're asked to find the pressure in bar, and this is the answer right here. Well, all of these parts, A, B, C, D, really are helping us get familiar with the tables. And so this is the table for water, for water, for water, for water, for water, where you have two phase, two phase and two phase liquid vapor mixture, or you have superheated, or you have compressed liquid, or you have a solid vapor um, uh, saturated, so it's it's a two phase, but it's two phase, not liquid vapor, but two phase solid vapor. This one is not, this is the least used. Um, these are the most used and this is very much used and this one is less used and then this is least used so uh, I don't think we solve any pro uh, problem here using table A6 we will use these other tables here okay so the first thing you do is when you're given a temperature and a specific volume you want to see if you can tell if it's in the superheated region or if it's in the two-phase region or compressed liquid region so Knowing this temperature, you could look up the base of G at the 95 degrees C or the base of F at 95 degrees C and then compare the given value of the specific volume with those values. So if I wanted to, maybe I do this. I could put on a PV diagram and we'll put a dome on here. And we have a line of constant temperature that line of constant temperature, we suspect 95 degrees C is not that hot. It's going to have a distinct region where it goes into the dome, and that is our saturation pressure, PSAT, which we don't know for 95 degrees C, but I would say it's a little less than one bar because not 100 degrees C is 1.01, 1 .01, 1 .01, what is it? It's atmospheric pressure. Okay. And then, so we have a value for the V sub G and the V sub F at that temperature of uh, 95 degrees C. So if we're greater than V sub G, we're out in the superheated region. And we would use table A4. If we're between V sub F and V sub G, we're in the two-phase liquid vapor region, and we would either use table A2 or A3. And if we're less than V sub F, we'd be in the compressed liquid region, and we would use table A5. So let's go and take a look at how do we find um, V sub G at 95C and V sub F at 95C. So we go to table A2 and we look down in the temperature column until we find 95 degrees C. And at 95 degrees C, we can read off the specific volume for saturated liquid as well as the specific volume for saturated vapor. So we find V sub F comes in at 0 0.0010397 meter cube per kilogram and the V sub G is 1.982 meter cube per kilogram and then we find that V given is a half so this is like V is equal to 0.5 meter cube per kilogram it's in between these two so because V is between V sub F and V sub G, we conclude that it's two-phase liquid vapor. So two-phase liquid vapor, that's our conclusion. 
And so our pressure that we're interested in finding is equal to the P sat, the saturation pressure, at our given temperature of 95 degrees C. And this is our pressure column, and there it is in bar. And so our answer is, is pressure is equal to 0.8. Four five five bar. Very good. Let's go to the next one. So part B. Given a pressure of 25 megapascal. Well, when you see this value, that's quite high. I know that you're you're developing a sense of how high certain numbers are, but this uh, the the uh, critical point pressure for water is around 22.09 megapascal, okay? This is above that critical point pressure, so it's a pretty high pressure. Now the temperature is 30 degrees C, it's not that high, you know, boiling point's 100, freezing point zero. And you're asked to find the specific volume. Well, because it's such a high pressure, you really can't go and find the V sub G at 25 megapascal. That does not exist. You know, it's, it's NA. It doesn't exist. It's not applicable. Why? Because 25 megapascal is above our critical point pressure. So what we do is look at this temperature. It's quite low. If I wanted to on a PV diagram, pressure volume diagram, I kind of put the steep, come out here. This is my critical point. This would be like a 22 megapascal. And then I'm saying, oh, but I'm at 25 megapascal. I'm way up here. So it's above the critical point pressure, but it's at such a low temperature. And that low temperature would be a line like this down to here. Then it cuts across and then goes out. That would be our low temperature, 30 degrees C. And... I don't know what the saturation pressure is at 30 degrees C, but it's low. It's definitely below the 0.1 megapascal close to the atmospheric pressure. So what we're going to do is we're, we're looking for you know this data up here, and we're looking for that specific volume. Well, it's, it's, it's compressed liquid. So it's compressed liquid or subcooled liquid. Either way you describe it, and uh, we would not use table A2 or A3, not even table A4 that's superheated. We would use table A5 for compressed liquid or subcooled liquid. So let's take a look. So we go to table A5, and it's properties of compressed liquid. Okay. One of the reasons is they have the input is pressure. That's one of the why they would, would tend to call it compressed liquid because everything is at this super high pressure 2.5 megapascal 5 megapascal anyway you look down for a 25 megapascal block and we're lucky that they give us a 25 megapascal pressure block so all this data here is for that 25 megapascal and then we look for 30 degrees c well unfortunately 30 is between the 20 and the 40 and so you have to do just linear interpolation to find this specific volume and this column right here is specific volume and those are the units so because the fraction of the way I like to do the interpolation two steps the fraction of the way between 20 and 40 30 is 10 degree 10 above 20 and the next increment, 40 in the table, is 20 degrees above, and so it's halfway. Okay. And so if I want to do this interpolation, it would be the V is the lower value. So I would say maybe the V at 20 plus that fraction times V at 40 minus V at 20. All of it for that 25 megapascal. So you would put in here the 0 0.9907 plus one half times the difference between 0 0.9971 0 0.9907 and I don't want to forget my um, 
header up here that's 10 to the 3. So I'm going to divide by 1,000. And you get the specific volume is, there's the answer right there. 0 0.0009918. And you can put the five. I'm not going to take off any points, but meter cube per kilogram. You know, it's it's out there at one, two, three, four, five significant digits. A little excessive, but it's acceptable. Okay. So let's go on. Okay, still with water. Here's our eight megapascal and 550. Now. That's not that high of a pressure. It's high, but it's not ridiculously high. It's not above the critical point pressure of 22 um, megapascal. And, but this is a high temperature, 550. So right away, I suspect that it's uh, superheated. And if it's superheated steam, it's table A4. And so you can just maybe even turn to table A4 and start to search. If you turn to table A4, you start looking for that 8 megapascal pressure block and they do have one so good we don't have to interpolate at least with respect to pressure so this is our 8 megapascal or 80 bar pressure block in table A4 and so all of this data is with that 8 megapascal pressure and now we're looking for 550 degrees C we come down here and uh oh another interpolation 550 degrees C. So again, I like to bust that interpolation into two steps. It's maybe I even draw it like this. Maybe I'll put over here. I have a temperature and I have a specific volume, the temperature degree C, the specific volume meter cube per kilogram. And I have two values that I know. I know it at 520 and that value is 0 0.04313. I look up at the header, does it have a thousand up here? No. So this is the actual value. I don't need to divide by a thousand. And then I come down and I have 560 and it's point oh well 0 0.04582. And I'm coming in with the value of 500. Why did I write 555? It's 550 degree C and I want to do that interpolation and find that specific volume right there. Again, I busted into two steps myself. I get the fraction. Okay, so it's 550 minus 520 divided by 560 minus 520. And when you do that fraction, it comes in at 0 0.75. I look, I make sure I don't have any algebraic errors. If this fraction is not between 0 and 1, I look for my error. And then I'll do the interpolation. So V is equal to, uh, if it's, it's V at 520 plus that fraction times the V at 560 minus the V at 520, the specific volume at 520. So substituting numbers, 0 0.04313 plus 0 0.75 times 0 0.04582 minus 0 0.04313. All of these have the units of meter cubed per kilogram. And then that fraction is dimensionless here. So V comes in at uh, 0 0.04. 4515 meter cubed per kilogram and then I pause and I take a look and I say is this value higher than this value if it is or if it's not in between these two values then I have a problem okay in this case this is the lower and this is the higher value so it can't be higher than the higher value and it can't be lower than the lowest value so it works uh, I, I look to check my answer to detect my own mistakes and then I can correct them before I turn in the exam and before the grader finds my mistake. Okay, part D, the last one for this problem. So we have a temperature of 45, it's reasonable. It's between the, the, the boiling point, it's lower than the boiling point of 100 degrees C. Okay, and we have a quality of 0.4. A uh, very quick reminder, what is the definition of the quality? The quality is the mass of the two-phase mixture 
that's in the vapor state divided by the mass of the two-phase mixture total. And so if it equality is 100%, then we have all in the vapor. If it's uh, zero, it's all in the liquid in Mark II phase. And so I, I, you can replace this by mass of the vapor divided by mass liquid plus mass of the vapor in our two phase liquid vapor mixture. Okay, so that's what our quality is. Okay, find the pressure and then find the specific volume in meter cubed per kilogram. Well, because it's two phase, the pressure is the saturation pressure at our temperature of 45 degrees C. So that's the first part of part D. And then what about the specific volume? Well, we use the equation that the specific volume is equal to the specific volume of saturated liquid, B sub F, plus the quality, which was given, times V sub G minus V sub F. It's just a linear interpolation based on mass. It's a mass fraction going from saturated liquid specific volume to saturated vapor. So if I put in x equal to 1 in this equation, so if, well, do if f, x is equal to 0, it's saturated liquid. V is equal to V sub f. Check the equation out. And then if the quality is equal to 1 in this equation, then V is equal to V sub g. It's just a, another linear interpolation. That, there you go. So for this problem, we have to look up those values. Let's go to the next slide. So we go to table A2. We find our 45 degrees C, and we can read off our saturation pressure. So P sat, well, P is equal to P sat. So let's just say P is equal to 0 0.09593 bar, box it. So that's good. And then for a quality of 40%, we find V is equal to V sub F at this number. So 0 0.0010099 plus our quality, which is 0 0.40 times V sub G 15.258 minus 0 0.001. 0099 and then when you run this on your calculator and all of these I mean the unit here is meter cubed per kilogram likewise here likewise there but oops that's a bad looking arrow uh, likewise there but the, when you're running the calculations you, you want to uh, be efficient in use of space and time and so I understand what you're doing and maybe you just put your meter cube per kilogram out here and then you're good okay the, the hard part is a lot of students will miss this you know they'll miss that that uh, that thousand right up here and they'll just put in one there instead of 0 0.001 and likewise over here they'll miss that anyway so we run our calculator and we get 0 0.6104 meter cube per kilogram and we'll go ahead and box it. Well, with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop. Thanks for your attention.